Welcome everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So not a day goes by that I don't get at least one or two emails in my inbox asking me questions related to technical analysis. Sometimes they'll say things like, well since we're at the top of a Bollinger Band or maybe RSI is overbought, are you sure we should be in such and such position? Other times they'll send me a picture of their favorite chart with a bunch of support and resistance lines drawn on it in different colors, flag patterns, head and shoulders patterns, and ask me if I agree with their assessment. It can be any number of things, but every day, all of them are essentially under the umbrella of one very important question, and one that I might add is quite polarizing in the investment world, and that is, does technical analysis actually work? Now, arguments from authority are always weak evidence, and there's going to be plenty of successful investors here that are going to give wildly different answers, and I just want to give my opinion. So I'll do that first, and then stick around to the end of the video, because I'm going to give you a couple of tips that might help you. So, does technical analysis actually work? Well, my answer is yes. And no. Let me explain what I mean. So before we talk about technical analysis, which is oftentimes just referred to as TA, we first have to establish some basics about supply and demand and what makes stock prices rise and fall. So I'm sure you've heard the phrase before, zero-sum game. Essentially, for every buyer, there's a seller. For every dollar made, a dollar has to be lost. Now, this doesn't apply to all markets, and there are places where this isn't the case. But for our purposes in this video, for an asset price to rise, it needs more buyers than sellers. And if there are more sellers than buyers, then the asset price will fall. It's more or less accurate. So in order for something like technical analysis to work, so to speak, we do need to understand and be on the right side of crowd behavior which is often sometimes just referred to as the first follower principle or social proof theory. It's essentially mob mentality. In order to predict whether a stock is going to rise, for example, we know we need more buyers than sellers in that case. So really the question comes down to, can technical analysis give us some clues as to what the mob is about to do? So that's why I say that yes, technical analysis can work. Now we don't need it to work all the time, and of course even the best traders have plenty of losing trades, and times that they're wrong. But even if it helps more often than not, that in itself is going to help increase our long-term profitability. So let me give you an example of a time that it actually worked. So what we're looking at here is a one-year chart of the S&P 500. Things were moving upward consistently for about two years, but starting this past February of 2018, it has been a choppy mess. But looking closer, there is a little bit of rhyme and reason to this chart. For example, that green line there is the 200-day moving average. Now you can see that there were three times that the S&P quite cleanly touched the 200-day moving average, dipped very briefly, and then bounced and went higher. In this case, the 200-day was a reasonable predictor of what the mob is potentially about to do. It's not a guarantee, of course, very far from it, but it's a potential predictor. Also, the 2780 range has been support two previous times, and we're seeing a stall at that level right now. It doesn't mean it's going to work or hold here. It's just about potential levels where investor psychology may come into play. So anybody that was using that 200-day moving average, maybe setting trade triggers close to it or using it to set stop losses just below, they successfully used technical analysis. It worked. And there's plenty of examples going back many years across a broad range of asset classes showing that simple to identify technical analysis can be useful. But notice I said simple. That was intentional and it's also the reason why I say no, technical analysis doesn't work. Because in order to predict what the mob is about to do, of course we need the mob to be looking at the very same thing. It's not going to work at all if their buying behavior is based on everyone seeing something different. If everyone seeing something different led to a stock price rising, well that's just a coincidence, and there's plenty of those in the technical analysis world. So TA works if it's very simple and easily recognizable patterns that the majority of people are also looking at. It doesn't work at all if you're the only person that sees the pattern. Now I'm not going to make fun of this. Obviously, it means something to the person who drew all these lines in different weights and colors and circles and everything, but this is a bit of a mess. Remember, predicting mob mentality requires the mob to be looking and moving the same way. How many people are going to look at this and see the same thing? Very few, right? So as smart as this might look to some, and as proud a technician as the person probably feels they are, unfortunately, there is no crowd behavior here. It's just one person drawing lines on a chart with predictability no better than 50-50, I would guess. So that's the bottom line. Human beings are pattern-seeking creatures, 
and the psychology of obvious arrangements does play a role in our decision making. But if nobody but you can see it, then it's worthless, and that's the irony and constant battle that technical analysts have to face. The more you immerse yourself in that world, the more knowledge you gain, the more patterns you learn to recognize, the higher the danger of you overcomplicating the issue. So I said I'd give a couple of tips, and this is my first one. If you're going to go down the technical analysis rabbit hole, then you're always going to want to try to bring it back to the basics. When it comes to technical analysis, simple is better. Basic moving averages and major support and resistance lines. Yes, these are quite useful. Bollinger bands. Sure, as long as you're using the most basic periods, go for it. MACD and RSI. These are also quite common, so again, use the more popular periods that most people are looking at, and then have at it. Also very basic chart patterns like triangles or flags and pennants. The simple ones that the majority of investors can recognize can be instructive as well. Again, this is where we're getting into areas where high-frequency trading algorithms and institutional investors will start to deviate on what they see and what it means. The more you add, the less likely it is to be adopted by followers. Uh, no, please, just stop it. Now, this is just a joke, but it makes a solid point. When you run out of space on your chart, you've lost the plot. And really quick here, the second tip that I have, whenever you're doing your TA, I recommend that you favor bullish continuation patterns over bearish reversal patterns. You've heard the old saying, the trend is your friend. Well, with investing, it's basically true. Now, on a long-term time horizon, being a contrarian and going against the grain can pay off. But in the short to medium term, it's pretty tough to be a contrarian in a bull market and make money. So I do recommend you favor those continuation patterns rather than trying to time the next market crash or volatility spike. So now you know where I land on the technical analysis works or it's total witchcraft debate. There's investors out there who think it's complete nonsense and won't even look at it. And then there's other investors who only use it and they go crazy with their complicated graphs. My opinion is somewhere in the middle. So learn your technical analysis. Embrace it as a tool that can supplement your investing and increase the probability of you making successful trades. Even if it's just by a little bit, every little edge can add up. But always remember that it's not about you. You're not trying to outsmart everybody with your knowledge of patterns. It's always about other people. More specifically, lots of other people. They have to see it too. The algorithms have to pick up on it as well. Or essentially, you're just doing your best Jackson Pollock impression. So please email me with any questions that you have. And also, feel free to keep sending those questions about technical analysis. This video isn't meant to stop that. It's meant to forward the dialogue. So please keep it up. Thanks for watching. So go ahead and click the link right here, sign up for the VTS newsletter, and when you do, you're going to get full access to all of my trading strategies for a full month absolutely free. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. See you next time.